Well, Purgis Night is upon us, and as is tradition, Dracula will be inviting guests to as many locations or castles around Transylvania, and you are going to be the ferryman of the damned, so to speak. You'll be taking by carriage guests to the different castles, and of course, in the back of your coach will be coffins, Dracula's friends, that are also going to be hiding at these parties lying in wait, and you will be scoring money as you drop these people off. As you drop them off, they'll be giving you money and also other vampires are going to mess with your carriage. People might turn into werewolves and you might have to deal with some other frights along the way. And hopefully you'll be able to drop off your guests and the coffins alongside them because at the end of every round, the coffins will emerge vampires, which will then feast on the different areas of the castles and the guests that you have provided and you will score blood points. After two rounds of the game, if your specific coffins and or vampires manage to feast on the most guests, then Dracula will be pleased, and you will be the winner of the game at Dracula while Purgis Night by Invaders. It plays two to four players, it takes about 45 minutes to an hour to pay, play, and it's for ages 13 and up. Let me show you the game down below. So here we have the game currently set up for two players, although it can play up to four. And if you're playing with less players, you can simply remove their player boards, their coffins, and their specific carriages from the board. Every single player is going to get their board, one coffin of that board's color, in this case I am playing with black and yellow, and the rest of the coffins placed in this general supply area here. Every player will also get two coins, uh, two of these passenger cards, and one event card. And then one player will get this card, which is the first player marker. Afterwards, you're going to take the customers or your traveling friends and you're going to shuffle this deck up and deal out five here. Place the hunter right next to the deck there and go ahead and set the event round one deck up over on the event side of the board or the, the traveling side of the board. These are the event cards over here. And then place one blood in each of Dracula's areas here. The last thing is, of course, shuffle the event cards. Um, these are like fatality cards or something um, and place them over here. You're going to have a pool of werewolves, of extra blood, and of coins that you'll be utilizing throughout the game. And then one player is going to start and place one of their carriages in one of the four locations. And then it'll go clockwise and players will place the rest of them down. After that, the game will begin. And in the game, you get to take one of two actions and then end your turn. Action one is really simple. You can take four of the travelers, whether it be from the top of the deck or in any combination of the available face-up ones. And then after you do that, you'll refresh these guys and uh, you'll end your turn. So in this case here, if he went first, maybe he would want, oh, I don't know. He'll take this D character here, this other D character, and then he'll take two more of these guys. And then he'll refresh, and that's one aspect of a turn. The other aspect is you can go ahead and attempt to travel, uh, in which case you can gather two characters from down below. So, and always look at your hand first, especially before selecting your location. I've got a B character here, so I'll take two characters. And then uh, we can refresh this. And then this character can, or this player can perform a travel. And how traveling works is pretty simple. Uh, they're playing as yellow and they have a certain number of customers in hand. The max you can have is six, not including event cards. Uh, before you begin traveling, you can place any of your passengers in the carriage spots provided. And there are four specific character slots. After you've placed up to four of them, then you're going to determine if you would like to push your luck. And there are four different areas on your player board. And I'll just go ahead and bring this a little closer for you guys. Uh, area one is this area here. This is the herb area, in which case you can prevent your passengers who may turn into werewolves as your journey continues. Uh, you can prevent them by placing a coin on that specific area. Uh, another thing you can do instead, or in addition to, is you can place a coin on this area here, which protects coffins from being broken, because you need these coffins in order to successfully gain points at the end of the round. Uh, this area here is to prevent the cart from taking damage, and this area over here is to pre prevent other vampires from eating your customers before your vampire does. Uh, after you've selected what you would like to place, um, and where, what coins, because each of these spaces requires a coin, maybe I'll place one over here on the vampire space, uh, then you're going to be able to take the journey, and you're going to say, okay, I'm yellow, and I want to go to B, so which is over here. In order to get to here, though, I have to take one of these cards here. These are nasty cards that will affect people in different ways. In this case here, it says that any of your characters that would turn into a vampire, or a werewolf, turn into a werewolf. So you'll take one of these tokens, and you'll place it there. 
and then this card will get discarded. And these guys are all going to do different things. Uh, after that, you've successfully got through the, the, the area. <laughs> now you're going to have the opportunity to drop off passengers. So in this case here, this character is a werewolf, and he's going to go ahead and drop <laughs> that uh, he's going to go ahead and drop that token off, and he's going to pay you. In this case, he'll pay you two coins, she'll pay one, and she will pay two. I will give this character, this player, five points. One, two, three, four, five, which is nice. Additionally, uh, you're going to place blood. Uh, you're going to place blood from this area over here onto the location based on the number of characters that you brought to the location, minus any werewolves or characters that turn into werewolves. You're then going to go ahead and take these and discard the rest. Uh, this character here is a werewolf. He can be dropped off anywhere. But at the end of the round, werewolves will eat one blood each. So you don't want to drop off werewolves at a location that you're planning on dropping off a coffin. Uh, so in this case here... I can uh, place this coffin down. Now, basically, after traveling, I could keep going uh, from right to left or left to right as far as I want, but I can't go back the other way. Uh, after I'm done traveling or before I travel, I can choose to take one of three different actions. Now, action one is I can sp spend three coins and two, uh, drop off a coffin. So these three coins will go back to the pool. This coffin will be placed at Bohemia, and that would be my single bonus action. Uh, a different action I could take is if I already had, if I had no coffin here, and I, I can only take this once per turn, uh, instead I can spend three coins to gain a new coffin and place it in my coffin location. And the final action you can take is if you're at a location that has your coffin, and let's say that Black also had one here, you could spend three coins to then switch the rotation of the coffins, because Vampires in the front area will feed first at the end of the round. So yellow will feed, black will feed, yellow will feed, black will feed. So being in front is going to help specifically if there's an odd number of, of characters in a two-player game. Uh, but regardless, this player has gained a coffin here and has at least put one blood there. So putting more characters here is going to be rather, rather important throughout the game. And then that will end their turn. They A, took two, B, traveled as far as they would they liked, and then they dropped off their characters, they used an optional action, and now it's back to this player's turn over here, in which case they can choose to travel, and we'll go ahead and we'll do one more turn, we'll do another travel. I've got uh, some Ds, so maybe I'll go ahead and place, uh, I'll, I'll do another travel action, maybe I'll take from the top of the deck here. And I will place out these guys here. Those are Ds. I can also go ahead and maybe take a, a vampire, or oh, I can take this guy here. He's he, he's a he's a priest. It'll give me one coin. I can drop him off anywhere, but he doesn't give blood, unfortunately. And I could also take a, a werewolf, I suppose. Maybe I can use it for later. And after that, I will go ahead and begin moving. I would go through here. I would flip this over. Oh no, I've lost a character, and these guys are eaten in the order this specifically requires. And when you lose your characters, they're just gone. <laughs> you don't get anything for it. And then you get to the location. I have my D here, which means I can go ahead and get rid of him. That would give me blood. He would give me money. I can get rid of the priest here. And of course, maybe I would go ahead and save this werewolf for later. And it's just going to go back and forth like that up until the point where all this blood gets onto the different locations on the map. So as you start placing more passengers out, this blood is still going to start going out on these locations. And when this is filled up, that will end the round. There's two rounds in the game. At the end of the round, you're going to go ahead and score points via the coffins like I said. So in this case here, if uh, we had these coffins looking like this, yellow would score these two minus one for each werewolf, yellow would score this, these three, and black would score these four. And then you would start up a new round. You would deal out all the new things. You have a new event deck that's going to come out, new blood that's going to come out. And then I'm not sure if the coffins are supposed to go back or not, or if you're just supposed to continue playing from the basic play state. But what I did is I just refreshed everything and started another round with the new event deck. And then at the end of the game, you determine who has the most points by whoever has the most blood in their area. And if it's a tie, then you will determine whoever has the most werewolf tokens, because there are certain characters in the game that will allow you to defeat werewolves when you purchase them and place them into your carriage. And there's also specific event cards that will allow you to do bonus damage to werewolves as you move across the board, shooting them down to keep yourself from losing points at the end of the round. And that's basically the game. Let's talk about my review.
let's go ahead and discuss the game. Now, first and foremost, this game is a pick up and deliver game. You need to pick up vampires, the coffins, uh, of your color and bring them to locations where there are many guests. And many guests are represented by blood because you're also going to be gathering guests from a tableau, placing them into your carriage and taking them to the locations they want to go to. And you can, of course, maximize and minimize uh, where you want them to go based on how you travel. And traveling is going to be a lot in the game that you're going to be doing. Moving from one location to another, avoiding perils and attempting to gain as much blood in locations that you control as possible. Moving your coffins ahead in priority to make sure that your vampires feed first is generally going to be useful as well. Taking werewolves or removing werewolves via the hunter is important too because werewolves will eat the humans that you want your vampires to eat or they will eat the humans that your opponents will want to eat, which is a good thing. So gathering werewolves isn't necessarily a bad thing as long as you can produce them into locations that are beneficial. There's other unique different types of guests that you'll be bringing on your carriage like priests, full-blown werewolves, and people who can turn into werewolves, and that all plays a role in the game as well. Artwork, really good. Solid. Love the artwork for this game. It feels good moving the carriage around, utilizing the artwork. It feels like I'm taking my, I'm transporting my food supply along with my hidden vampires. Reminds me of kind of like a Bram Stoker's kind of a feel in which I'm like uh, secretly aiding and abetting the vampires while just being this, n you know, normal carriage driver, just doing his job by taking guests to a party. But in fact, I'm a super sinister evil cohort of the vampires attempting to make sure that they get to feed on their wondrous occasion. So super cool cool. Uh, this is a prototype game. It is going to be on Kickstarter, and so everything you see here is prototype material, but what they've given me shows me that the game's going to be really cool looking as long as they, you know, make the boards wood and keep with the, the idea of the game. Uh, some of the pieces and components I've added into, like, the, the, the coins and whatnot, so uh, you have to look on the Kickstarter to see the different quality of the components that they're going to be hopefully bringing uh, to production. Um, another thing to note, too, is the rules. The rules are uh, not as fleshed out as they should be. Uh, one thing, for instance, is whenever you gather a new coffin from the coffin area, you're going to be gathering an event card. This is not specified in a certain area, but it is at the end of the book, so that should be clarified better. Uh, when the rounds are over, it needs to be more specified. Does everybody take their coffins off of the board and place them back? Do you get a new hand of cards, a new hand of... You know, different types of travelers, or do you just play instantly from the last previous time when you left off? Uh, do the blood ref does the blood refresh? I mean, I'm guessing I'm ge and based on how I played, uh, everything refreshes. The blood refreshes. Uh, a new event deck comes out, which is also not mentioned. There's a second event deck, uh, which I think I did talk about down below. Um, but yeah, there's just certain things in the rulebook that just need clarity as far as that goes. But if played the way I think it plays, and it makes sense that it plays this way because otherwise it'd probably not work as well. Uh -huh, uh, it plays well. I really, really enjoyed this game. I really enjoyed traveling the, uh, around the different locations, dealing with the traps, determining how I wanted to push my luck, where I wanted to put my coins when I didn't want to put my coins in specific areas, and what happens when I didn't actually, like, basically double down for insurance when you're playing 21. Sometimes you don't do that and it costs you. Well, the insurance on the dealer's 21 is important to do so, and in this you have different options. You want to protect yourself from the wheels breaking, from other vampires coming in and taking your humans, uh, from your humans turning into werewolves and not granting you any any blood, all these things play a big role in the game and what you choose to do makes a big difference in the game. Very similar, uh, very straightforward style game. Uh, each game plays differently based on the different passengers you gather, but expect each game to play in the same manner. There's not a lot of different variations of play. Basically, you gather your stuff, you place your carriage, and you go. You gather as many different guys as you can, place them in the locations that are most beneficial for you. Round one ends, you score. Round two begins, things get a little more challenging. The event deck gets a little more daring. You have to then realize, okay, I, this is the location I need to place here, and this is the location I want to go here, and these guys need to go here, but not over here, because there's a coffin of my opponents over here, and maybe I want to actually increase uh, in, in value my coffins because when you have an odd number of coffins in an area or an even number of coffins in an area and your coffin is last you'll get one less point if you have an odd number of blood there's a lot of little intricacies that you don't necessarily think about until as you start playing and you start realizing oh this game has little strategical niches that i didn't actually realize it had oh i didn't know i could do this or oh actually these uh, werewolves are really nice to utilize on my opponents and oh he had an event card that let him move a werewolf from his location to mine thusly is switching a two point <laughs> a two point swing over in his favor, and I was not 
prepared for this? Well, yeah, very, very cool, really unique and interesting action cards and abilities. Uh, this game is going to see a lot of replayability from people who enjoy pick up and deliver games, people who like a little bit of area control, and a little bit of take that, just a slight amount where you're able to like play certain event cards on people or use those cards to protect you in certain ways. I had a lot of fun with this game. For those of you interested in a game that involves these specific mechanics, you're gonna, it's gonna be great as long as they make sure to fix the rules and make sure there's just a little bit more clarity. But overall, a very solid game. Really, really Really enjoyed myself with Vampire <laughs> Dracula Walpurgis Night. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Dracula Walpurgis Night by Invaders. If you're interested in picking up the game, it's currently on Kickstarter. Link down below in the description, as well as, of course, Moonshell, my wife's game. It'll be up for another four or five days. It's a game about mermaids gathering specific shells off of a main board and rotating that board, utilizing those shells and placing them onto your player board to complete open and closed objectives while also utilizing mermaids and your mermaid powers. You can also go and check out our website, Unfiltered Gamer gamer.com, blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, hit that subscribe button and that bell notification button. It greatly helps us out here and we do greatly appreciate it. You can also go ahead and check our Discord, check out our Patreon, send us a dollar, helps us out uh, in a lot of ways, allows us to be able to send more giveaway content to people, and of course allows us to do more things like this. All right guys, that's all I got for you this time, and as always, I look forward to sending you to Dracula's castle parties next time.